All right, so let's talk about what you can do right now to make money today. All right, so here's the thing is that um, you've been in the business, maybe not a while, but maybe you've been in the business for maybe a month, two months or whatever. Um, the hottest leads in your entire database are leads that are you've already went on appointment. So if you're going to categorize or a hierarchy of leads um, in your database, how would you categorize them? First off, the highest priority lead is a lead that you've already went on an appointment, right? So you went on an appointment, you haven't got the deal, that is the highest priority lead. The next highest priority lead in your database are leads that you have not touched, you have not touched. So those two leads right there in your database are the highest priority leads. So the goal is what to do to make money today, right? So every time you wake up in the morning, people ask and they go, well, I don't know what to do to get, I don't know what to get, you know, what to do. I don't know, you know, what to do today. I don't know what I have to focus on. Listen, you gotta focus on what's gonna make money today. So if you focus on what's gonna make money today, then that's going to push you forward to the highest priority item. So if I wanted to go out and I wanted to make money today and my team is focused on making money today, then to do that, you obviously have to get a property under contract. You have to get a property under contract for the right price, right? So before getting a property under contract, you're gonna have to make an offer. Before you make an offer, you have to find a lead to make an offer on, right? And before you find the lead to make an offer on, you gotta know who, what is the highest priority lead. So the highest priority lead are one sellers you've already won an appointments on and they have said no um, and uh, leads in your database you have not yet touched. So I'm going to talk about specifically leads that you already went on an appointment on. So here's the thing. You may have went on the appointment and you might know more today than you did when you first went on that appointment, right? So there's an education process that you might be able to or have better skills today than when you went on the appointment, number one. Number two is the, the seller decision timeline process where a seller makes a decision over time because time changes, circumstances change, and time passes. So at, you might meet a seller, say a month ago or two months ago, even three months ago, and you meet with that seller and they tell you no, they want retail. Well, your skills at the time may not have been uh, good enough to get persuade the seller or educate the seller on why going with you is the best route, number one. Number two is as time passes, circumstances change, right? So the goal is as, they, as the time passes, that circumstance will change and that circumstance will change where if you're in front of them and you call them and you keep it consistent and you follow up with them, you will be able to get the contract. Now, think about this. What if now education changes for you? Now you understand how to use what's called the down payment arbitrage. Down payment arbitrage is where you leave the existing loan in place and you negotiate a down payment to the seller and you arbitrage it with a down payment to the buyer. You might not have known how to do that a month ago, two months ago, three months ago. So the seller might be in a situation where you believe they want retail and you're not knowing how to structure a retail deal. We got a deal we're signing today on. It's gonna be a $30,000 deal. So it's a $30,000 deal and essentially we're giving the seller at or close to retail for the property. The seller has a, a note on the property, then we're creating a $30,000 second note on the property and we're giving them $5,000, but it's a beautiful house. It's in a great neighborhood. It's super clean. Houses in there are um, houses in there are upwards to $400,000. And that house was sell off the shelf to a EA in either retail buyer or a uh, maybe a VRBO buyer. The bottom line is, is that what can you do to make money today? Well, you gotta make money today. You have to make offers today. The fastest way to make offers and re or revisit these sellers that you've already went on appointments on and approach them again from a different angle. You might not have been persistent then, right? You might not have been persistent at that time. Now you're gonna be persistent. Now you're gonna push through. Understanding exactly what the seller's uh, 
big magic problem is, finding that magic problem and solving that magic problem will get you to the end of the line and get that contract accepted. So listen, a month ago, two months ago, three months ago, when you visited that appointment for the first time, you might not have understand, I've got to find the magic problem. You might not have understand, I can do down payment arbitrage, or I can leave the seller financing in place and I can arbitrage the down payments. You might not have understand how to logically bring them to the closing, over that closing line through showing them the numbers and how the numbers works, right? We call it a down to the penny close. A down to the penny close is where you're, you're, you're showing them the, the actual numbers. You're walking them through how, what, what they're gonna get for a net number, right? So once you guys, once you can agree on what a, uh, uh, an actual as is value for the property, Right, so you gotta get an as is value for the property. This is called the down to the penny close. You get them to agree with you on an as is value of the property. Not a fixed up property, not an ARV property, but an as is value. Once you get to the as is value, you have what's called the, the list to close ratio, right? That's typically about 6%. List to close ratio is about 6%. And it's different from all, all parts across the entire country. So when you're doing a down to the penny close to the seller, you're getting down to the penny that they are going to get net from either going with a realtor or going with you. So the first number that you're gonna deduct off that price is going to be the list to home closing ratio. Then there's gonna be um, a repair cost. That's typically on a house like that to get it fixed up anywhere from one to 2%, right? And then you're gonna take uh, realtor commissions and fees. That's another um, 6%. Then you're gonna have closing costs is another 2%. So you got 6% for list to home ratio. You got 6% for a realtor. You got one to 2% to get the property fixed up and cleaned up, right? And you're gonna have what's called inspection items. Then you're gonna have another 2% that are closing costs. So you're at 12, 16% right out of the gate, and we haven't even talked about holding time yet. We haven't even talked about 120 days is a typical holding time for, for uh, to sell a property. So now you've got a potential 120 days that the property is going to sell. Well, guess what? There is uh, mortgage payments. There are um, you've got uh, you've got mortgage payments on there. You've got uh, holding costs, electric, and all that type of stuff that's on there. So that could be essentially another one percent. So, and what you're doing is you're talking the seller through these numbers, and you're saying, "Listen, your net number, if you decide to go with us, if you decide to go the realtor route, is X." Right. So what you're going to do is you're going to take two hundred thousand dollars and you're going to go all the way down. And you're going to hit a number. Right. Then your net number with going with us is going to be Y. If that number can equate to a five to even a seven thousand, maybe a ten thousand dollar number, then more times than not, a seller we're gonna will see the advantage of going to uh, with you. And this is a logical close. And listen, and you can build the emotional side of the close into it by talking to the seller and telling them, say, listen, you could go the other route and guess what? You might not even end up there. And if you do go the other route, it's uncertain. You don't know when you're going to close. You don't even know what your price is going to be. It could be a lot lower. The price, the market could go lower, right? And you could typically... You know, you might have to uh, have people go through your house. You might have to clean up and fix up your property. You might have to move stuff in the storage we haven't even talked about. So that's one route of uncertainty or the other route is clarity and knowing exactly what's going to happen. But listen, what's the value, Mr. Seller, to you? So if you do what's called down to the penny close, you'll be able to get to that net number. So you might have not known that five minutes ago before we talked about it. Now you can go back and you can talk to the sellers in your database of sellers you've already talked to and you've already, they've already told you they want retail, but you didn't know that five minutes ago. Now you can work with them and do what's called a down to the penny close. This is new information. So now when you're talking to the seller, you can say, hey, listen, you know what? I've got some new information. I might be able to make you a better offer than I did last time. Let me, uh, let me, let me, 
let me let me sit down. Let's do another meeting. So how can you make money today? What's going to make money today? How can you get a contract today and be excited? Then you can get on this live stream tomorrow and say, I took action. I called all the sellers of my database that have already had appointments on that they told me they wanted retail and I didn't convert a contract and you felt bad because of it. You walked in, you walked into an appointment, you met with a seller, you walked around the house, maybe you spent an hour there and you didn't walk out with a contract and now you're mad, right? Now you're going, oh man, I didn't get the contract. Listen, that's an opportunity. Don't look at what didn't happen. Look at what now you can do. Now you know the down to the penny close. Now you can take them through the process. You can get them to agree on an actual as is value. Then you can reduce those percentages down to a logical number. You Now you get down to a specific logical number. And if yours is, like I said, even a little bit $5,000 less, you're able to get the deal. What if they wanted retail and you now know the down payment arbitrage? You know how to structure a deal because you take, you're taking the course maybe in the down payment arbitrage course. Now that you know that, you can turn around leave the existing loan in place, give them a little bit of cash, even maybe create a second tier note that can get them higher higher up on the uh, their value and show them how they can get money. The deal that, that we're, uh, we're signing today, the seller said, listen, I wanna make $40,000. So we showed them how with a second note and with a little bit of interest and deferred interest, so you didn't even have to make payments on it, Plus their mortgage amount that's currently, so we kept the mortgage in place, we created a second tier note, we created enough interest that's gonna be paid over five years on how they can make their $40,000. So we gave them exactly what they want, but it was over time, and we, we'd be able to leave the existing loan in place, and we got that contract, uh, we got that contract, uh, you know, which is gonna be essentially a $30,000 down payment arbitrage deal um, that we're pulling in today. So how do you give the seller what they want and be able to structure a deal where you can make a profit. Well, that's that's called the down payment arbitrage, right? So what's gonna make money today? What's gonna make money today? What's gonna make money today is um, you making offers on sellers you've already went on appointments on, now you have new information. And here's the other thing, is persistence, right? Persistence in the appointment. And it has to be done in a way um, where you have a relaxed intensity. A relaxed intensity means you're intense, you're on a mission, you know where you're going to drive the conversation, you know where you're gonna take the seller, but you're doing it in a relaxed fashion. There's two different types of people. There's people that are massively intense, right? They're massively intense, and what happens is it blows the seller out and they break the rapport and the seller doesn't like and trust them. Then there is a relaxed intensity where you're intense, you know exactly where you're going to bring them, but you're doing it in a nonchalant fashion by continuing to build rapport. So what we do is you push a seller to make a decision. You push a seller to on a low price. You push them, you feel resistance, you back off, you build rapport, right? You build the level port, then you go back and you push and you craft another angle. And then it comes back and then you, you they have resistance, then you push and then you go back. For an example, I got this deal under contract. Seller wanted $334,000, right? That's That was his number. Give me 334, don't even talk to me. That was his attitude. We need to be around 290 to 300 to make that thing work. So how do I get a guy from 334 that says, you know, 334 or nothing, down to $300,000, right? Number one. And he said, I'm not signing anything today. I walked into the appointment. I met with the seller. I built a level of rapport. I had to start low because it was a red personality. I started off at a $250,000 offer. He wanted 334, the guy freaked out. It's normal, it happens, it's part of the game. It's part of a red personality, aggressive red personality, right? So I had to come out low and have him beat me up because uh, a red wants to win. If I would have started at 290 and 290 to 300, that's really not essentially winning to him. I had him to beat me up bloody. So I had to start at $250,000 as my initial offer. So I started at $250,000 for my initial offer and he went and we went back and forth. And I pushed him, we came back. I listened I, and I came to the point where I had, I might have my hand on the guy's shoulder. I says, listen, bud. I said, you wanna sell, you know you wanna sell. I'm a buyer, 
I'm sitting right here, but you have an unrealistic number. You've been trying to sell this property and you haven't been able to sell it and I'm sitting right here because it doesn't have a master bathroom. You know it doesn't have a master bathroom and you know it's not gonna sell because it doesn't have a master bathroom. So what do you wanna do? Do you wanna continue uh, living in this fantasy world that you're gonna get 334, right? Or do you wanna get this sucker done, you wanna get it done today and you wanna get it closed? Now, that's pushing the seller. But I had to have a level of rapport first. I can't do that right out of the gate. And because I pushed that seller, guess what? He respected it. We went back and forth and I got it signed at $300,000. And he told me I'm not signing anything today. And he told me I'm not getting it going any lower than 334. It's called persuasion. It's called standing your ground. It's called pushing and pulling. Pushing and then you pull back and then you turn around and you build rapport. You push and then you pull back and you build rapport. See, a lot of people go and they push, 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 and then they break rapport, and then the seller doesn't like them, you know, and now and now you lost that potential deal and they don't like you. So you gotta push, 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 but also too, you gotta turn around and build rapport. So again, how do you make money today? The two leads that you wanna hit in your database right now are leads that you've already been appointments on. You wanna revisit those. You wanna find out what the situation is. You wanna find the magic problem. The magic problem, if you can find that magic problem, you're able to solve that magic problem and you can get that deal closed, right? So the second type of lead in your database you wanna to talk to are leads that are not yet um, contacted, not yet contacted. Those sellers, what you wanna do is do a voice broadcast, pull them all out of your database, do a voice broadcast on those. In, uh, I mean, we have our VM lead machine, what we do, we create a voice broadcast and we do that um, every, literally, not every single day, every single week we do that, but then also we physically call those sellers physically call those sellers they have reached out to us we're not able to basically get them um, uh, get them uh, on the phone so we want to be able to uh, hit as many people as humanly possible so you might have 5 10 15 30 people in your database 50 people in your database that you haven't even had a discussion with yet these are not yet contacted leads those are the second highest priority leads in your database. You have paid for the data, those leads have come in, and uh, and you haven't converted them yet into appointments. So now, we gotta get these people back on the phone. How do we do it? The fastest way to do it is do a voice broadcast. You can do a text to these people, and then what's gonna happen is those are gonna inbound the rest of the time, you're just gonna turn around and call them. 